Well, hey, Scorpio, welcome back to Peony Lore, where we help you to find the beauty in all things. Welcome back and welcome to my new subscribers. I'm very grateful for all of you guys here. Um, <laughs> I didn't even get a chance to go through all it, the, but they're going. So I, if you keep, blah, 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 let's start over. <laughs> Just as I've done with each of the different signs, I'm taking the moment to introduce you to the angel that was assigned to your zodiac so that you have another resource to call on besides your own personal angels and guides, okay? And as I was communing with Barbiel and we were merging energies to get the cadence of this particular reading, um, he definitely told me he wanted me to use the psychic tarot deck for you. He wants me to use the, he said there's some chakra information that's going to pop up that's going to be um, necessary for you to understand, okay? And the uh, other cards that are coming out are my naughty unicorns. If you're offended by language, then just get over it. And maybe you're not meant to be here on my channel. <laughs> Even though some good shit's about to go down. <laughs> um, the support cards that you're going to get for Major um, here, Scorpio, is going to be the energy of the um, is Beyond Lemuria cards here. I love this Oracle deck. And I'm excited that they all want to be utilized in a different way um, this particular reading this month of, of March. So um, the water signs are all getting um, this energy here. So some good shit is about to happen according to your angel Barbie. I'll let's go ahead and dig into what um, these oracle cards want to be able to support that with before we get into the reading. And the reading is going to be the same style as we've done before. We're going to do a week's layout at a time, followed up with a whole different oracle card to kind of summarize that energy for the week. There's no way that's that many cards, you guys. Okay, no, shuffle twice. Um, and so you're going to end up getting a lot of cards on the table. And I'm totally fine with that. Um, so I hope that your first week of March um, was well. Um, transit wise there was only two big periods that showed up hopefully you got through them very well the first of march well i'll take them oh wow yeah that's actually really cool thank you thank you thank you um so the first of march we had the moon in libra that actual first day of march um in a conjunction with um chiron and aries okay and i'm gonna move barbie all to the side um, and so, you know, that, that was one thing, especially if you know where Chiron is in your personal natal chart, that some could have, you know, had some things to do with you if you have Libra in your chart also. On the third, which would have been like that Wednesday, um, Mars went into Gemini, which would have created a lot of restless energy for people, a lot of irritation, and a lot of people having problems speaking um, their ideals out to people. Um, but other than that, those major transits, there wasn't really anything specific or special that's going on. Now, this week, um, the week of the 8th, we will have some significant activity that's showing up. Okay, so first let me do this. Some good shit is about to go down. Don't let your issues fuck it up. <laughs> I just read the cards. Um, for, <laughs> uh, manifestia. This is manifestation. This is the energy of, of the, um, what do you call that guy? What do you call him? What's our guy? The magician. Sorry. <laughs> Gemini and Virgo energy. A lot of third eye energy. There's a lot of miracles that are, that are here associated with this particular card. You got two. And the other one was loving compassion. Okay. So loving compassion, manifestia, and some good shit's about to go down. That is a general energy of what's going to be popping up with the, with the cards this, um, this particular week. So um, anyways, on the 10th, we have the sun um, in Neptune, which is going to go into conjunction with Gemini. So here's what's going to happen. Secrets are going to come out. Stuff that is supposed to come to the surface is going to come out. Even if it's not you, you're going to be in the energy or the or, or the vicinity of someone that's realizing that a lot of energy is coming out. And then what that's going to force other people to do is do a lot of soul searching on that day, the 10th. So just be aware, okay? Um, that's it for the major part of the week until you get into the weekend. And then on the weekend, on the 13th, we have the new moon that's popping up. So take advantage and manifest with your moon magic where you can. Manifestia! All of the new things that you would like to call into your existence. Okay. So Barbiel told me that the cards that showed up in reverse will be clarified, like I said. Yeah, he wasn't shitting with the White Sage Tarot. And also to use it as clarifiers on any Shraka cards that popped up because he said it will um, be a little bit more meaningful as some of the cards are going to duplicate. 
And whenever cards duplicate, those are um, items for you to really, really, really pay attention to, okay? Is there anything else for this first week? No. Okay. Thank you. So what we have here is a major arcana card of disruption. This is the tower energy. So people get freaked out sometimes still about the tower card. And I really wish people wouldn't because the tower card is really here to help you. Either you wanted to have something be done and you, you couldn't really try to get it done on your own or um, the universe is here to try to, cl to, to, to clear it up for you, um, or this is just good timing um, for something to show up in your world, and you automatically know that this is scorpionic energy within itself, okay? So, <clears throat> determination, will, persistent, persistence, and drive um, to try to get something done. Now, why is this tower here? We will clarify Major Arcana, and well, so it looks like we're going to clarify three cards. Major Arcana. So, what we have sitting next to it is a choice. And the two of wands or the two of rods is in the reverse position. So actually, we're going to clarify. Um, we're actually clarifying. Damn, we're, we're clarifying everything here. Major Arcana, reverse position. Okay. And all right. So we're going to be clarifying. The waiting game, the two of wands. You cannot really technically make a wrong choice when the two of wands comes up and it presents itself to you. Why? Well, because the two of wands are going to intersect. Regardless of which choice you make, either left or right, they're all going to lead to the same point, okay? So we're going to find out what is going on with this waiting game. To me, it looks like there might be a little bit of impatience because you're expecting something good to happen. Like you're expecting this tower to come clear something and you just can't wait. <laughs> um, Crown Shocker sitting in the reverse position. Um, is indicative of the fact that you you're you might be blocking yourself just a little bit from this information because you're so s you're spinning on what it is that you think is getting ready to show up here in the upright position though I really love this we've got the major kind of Aries himself um we've got uh or no we don't we've got Leo I beg your pardon we've got Leo sitting here the uh a, a strength card in this card in this deck it's called power okay and this is all about organization. It's about boundaries. Um, it's about standing in your actual power. It's also a card of healing as well. Okay. What are we healing? Well, potentially we're healing some heart chakra activation as well. So he did say that there was a lot of chakra work that need to get done. The four of pentacles uh, in reverse here in this deck, it's called firm foundation with it sitting in the reverse. There's something that you're not feeling comfortable, about. like you feel something is getting ready to happen. You know, something is getting ready to happen. And, um, you know, you're, you're a little bit twisted on it. So first, let's go ahead and just hit these. And again, these are not for every single day of the week. These are the energies that are going to come through in that particular week. So there's no specific order. You're going to feel it and you're going to know it. But let's go ahead and clarify. Why is the Tower card here for our Scorpio, please? <clears throat> what do they know? Well, hang on. It's definitely those two. And it is also, okay, we got a story. Yeah, I like those. When they clump, we know. Okay, so you're anticipating something based on um, a kafluffle. So this Five of Swords energy that's here, honestly, the answer is pick your battles with ease and grace. So you're battle weary about something that happened. You might have been the the benefactor of some major argument or something else that happened, but there's a little bit of squirreliness that still needs to kind of shake out of it. It definitely had something to do with the partnership or a choice. So the lover's card um, always, uh, always indicates that there's a choice. It's usually a good choice. So if you were feeling like you were feeling not confident in a decision that you had to make, um, be assured that you were. The death card also here, transformation. Wow, there you guys are. You're here. The death card, complete transformation. Um, that also, I'm trying to, I'm trying to pull these energies together so I can articulate it for you. There's more to it than just that that I'm feeling. Yeah, your shockers are a little bit janky right now, which is why he said what he said. <laughs> crown chakra and I'm also getting throat chakra even though it's not represented sitting here at this particular moment but you had to say something or you had to do something and you feel it was going to create 
kind of a big kerfuffle and it definitely had something to do with the decision. Now, here's the deal. When the lovers show up, especially when they show up upright, it does usually indicate that whatever decision is that, that had to be made was the right one. You were justified in the decision that you had to, to bring forward. Might have been a little bit painful for you to get there, but you did the right thing. It, it's causing the transformation that needs to take place. So, um, whether you called it on yourself or whether the universe is use, seizing this as an opportunity to help clear something out of your path, you're getting the full card in reverse at this particular moment. This will turn itself around for a new opportunity before the end of the day, okay, um, before the whole thing is over. But this is kind of where the history of this um, tower card in reverse is. Now, let's just confirm why is the two of rods in the reverse position? I beg your pardon. I'm going to reshuffle that because I had two cards, the high priestess and the two of rods that also showed back up, I want them to pop back out if that's natural, okay? Um, I want to know what we're, what we're waiting for, okay? Uh, what we're waiting on. So the King of Swords in reverse, uh, not a, a lack of confidence in a sense um, about having to push forward and clear. So you're really still twisting about the decision that really had to be made here. Um, what else can you tell us about this King of Swords in reverse? Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> Beg your pardon. <clears throat> Come on. Five of Pentacles. Okay. So, yeah, you are really twisting about this decision that needed to be made. But the fact that it's sitting in reverse means that you just had a little lack of confidence when it came to making this change or this decision, this choice that had to be done. That's really what it boils down to. Okay, you're overthinking this just a little bit because the five of pentacles in reverse means that you have turned the corner and that you have um, are not are no longer seeing yourself as the victim. Um, I guess is the easiest way for me to say it. You've, you may not have felt as though you did or said things in a clear manner, but you're no longer feeling like you're the victim. And that's great energy to be in. All right, let's talk about this crown shocker being in reverse for our Scorpios, please. It definitely wants to be this top card. It just didn't flip out. Hey, look at that. Two of Pentacles, upright. Um, that's a good choice. Another choice. Um, it does indicate... <clears throat> that you're going to start to get your balance back. And that makes a lot of sense to me with it sitting next to this Leo card here. You just needed a little bit of time to try to go through what it is that you needed to go through. But it looks like you kind of, you, you went through that very, very quickly, which is great. What else do we need to know about this Two of Pentacles, if anything? Sense of balance will be restored is the only thing that I'm being told. And carry on. Okay. <laughs> So power, um, what else do we need to know about this power card that's sitting here for our Scorpios? <clears throat> ah, sorry, I'm going to reshuffle that. Basically, what they're telling me before these other cards come out is that you, whatever was going on here, you felt at the end of the day was going to affect your dollars and it was going to um, shake up your, um, your firm foundation. And firm foundation is root chakra or base chakra, however you learned um, about that particular chakra, okay? But let's see. What can the Major Arcana of Leo tell us? Queen of Swords. We'll see you graduate. Where you were a little bit more in your heart center here. Now you're all up all in with your discernment at this particular moment. And so... Um, I had this conversation come up with somebody the other day. Well, what's the difference between making a judgment about somebody and then using your discernment? Your discernment is more energy-based. That's just the easiest, honest way to say it. Um, the Queen of Swords doesn't get a, doesn't get always the best rap. She does sometimes get the energy of kind of being a bee. But at the end of the day, she's a grown woman, very mature, understands exactly what needs to be done, goes after doing it. She just isn't very touchy-feely when it comes to getting the thing done, okay? So you should always have a queen of swords on your side somewhere. Now, where we're getting here with this firm foundation is that, yeah, you're expecting something to transform this temperance card. And um, the other thing is, is that your heart chakra just kind of really took a big blow based upon all this different stuff that showed up here within that particular week. Yeah, it definitely affected someone in business. The Queen of Wands sitting in reverse um, is basically where it came from. So this is looking at whatever this challenge was, it definitely had something to do with you being off balance enough that you thought it would potentially affect your day-to-day -day business. Is there anything else? 
Nope, he said carry on. All right. So the next card that we're going to pull out for this week, you guys, is going to be the Therapy Angels. And so Therapy Angels, I would like to know what is. piece of advice do you have for our Scorpios, please, for the remainder of this particular week in March, all the way through to the new moon on the weekend. fairies and then the other one that goes here oh my god you weren't joking all of them he said all of them so here we go so you you're gonna get your own little spiel here um all right so let's take it one by one um fairies you have a strong bond with the fairies and your life purpose inv involves helping mother nature second card is clear yourself ask the angels to help release any toxic energies that you may have absorbed so it's potential you still haven't released 100 percent of this which is why your chakras are kind of out of whack it makes natural sense um so so ask the angels to help clear you and they will be there okay the next card is specifically they want to talk to you about your sacral chakra itself because you're highly sensitive to chemicals additives processed foods and energies right now respect your sensitivities by avoiding those harsh items situations and relationships and it doesn't mean boyfriend girlfriend it just means a grouping of people that you would associate yourself with and at the end of the day for all of my moon goddesses that are out there females or male um please take advantage of this full moon or excuse me this new moon that's coming up on the 13th please 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 do yourself a favor embrace your divine feminine energy and embrace its magical intuition and nurturing qualities because you are assured that you're going to get exactly what it is that you need with this restoration um i think i said the same thing maybe to libra but if you've got some pto time coming up babes you guys are going to want to maybe take a day maybe you want to take that friday off so that you can start doing some of these manifestation pieces on your own but again i want to draw your attention to the fact that loving compassion it, uh, and it may obviously be for other people but it definitely has to damn sure be you as well okay but let's not lose sight of the fact that some good shit's about to happen. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and move to the week of the 15th. We're, okay, here's the deck. All right. So on the 15th, as far as a major transit is concerned, you got Mercury and Pisces. Okay. And there's going to be some imagination um, running rampant where, whereby concentration can be off a little bit. And people are trying to be creative. The other word that I'm going to use is cunning. Um, just be aware of that, okay? <clears throat> Put your stake in the ground where you can. Maybe you want to take that Monday off. I don't know. Maybe I'm giving myself permission to take a few days off. <laughs> So the first cut out that we have is suffering in silence. Just again, I think some of you guys are going to have Libra in your chart. I think it's very interesting with, with, with some of the uh, components that are showing up here. Suffering in silence, this nine of swords energy. Um, nine of swords energy means a couple of different things. <laughs> um, it does mean that you're potentially very, very tuned in to the point where whatever's going on energetically, especially if you take advantage of this moon information, is going to be providing you with a bunch of downloads, okay? So to the best of your ability, try to utilize um, the, uh, the, the, uh, the traditions and the, what's the word I'm looking for? Why can't I speak English today? Hmm rituals <laughs> whatever ritual is most meaningful to you you should really want to probably get down on that action but there's a potential that with this um, new moon energy you could also be having a little bit of lack of sleep as well okay um, so not anything too crazy but it's just something for you to be aware of now we go from the four of pentacles in reverse to the five of pentacles in reverse and I actually like this positioning because the five of pentacles means that you are releasing yourself from a thought process or something else meaning that you you no longer feel like you're the victim here now we do have the major arcana of the capricorn devil energy sitting right here so we are going to have a little bit more conversation about that one as we clarify as it's a major what else do we have for this week of the 15th i said there's only one more card okay there it is third eye chakra <laughs> So we're going to be basically clarifying everything but that suffering and silence card. Alrighty here. Again, like I said, you're releasing yourself from feeling that you were a part of or are no longer feeling like the victimhood um, in, in a particular situation. There it is. Judgment card and the page of cups. Yes. Your, your cup is beginning to be refilled. Um, page of cups um, is coming towards you. Uh, to indicate that there's going to be a restoration of 
um, new new thought process, new feelings. The judgment card in the upright position is meaning, you know, you don't need to judge yourself too harshly because you made the correct judgment. You made the correct decision. You are now at a position where you are ready to start to receive the different accolades of those different things. When the judgment card shows up, you really do have to be clear so that when they start dumping all these beautiful things on you, you're prepared, right? You don't have anything holding you back. You're not blocked anywhere. They can completely fill you up with whatever those things are. Having had said that... Let's really sit on this temptation card, this this devil energy that's here. Um, very, very rarely do I really get a lot of like legit addiction to this. Um, but I am being told that there's potentially a couple of people that are out there that went through such a hard time that they put themselves in kind of like a rough way. Um, so let's just see what else we want to clarify with this devil energy, this temptation. Four of Pentacles, yeah. Um, Heart chakra, it's the same energy here. What else do we have? Um, foundation. And then the three of pentacles. Okay, so this is an interesting scenario which requires another card. Thank you. There it is. <laughs> All right. Don't quit your job. <laughs> That's basically what I'm getting out of this is don't, don't quit your job per se. This is definitely related to what the situation was that was going on up here, okay? So, again, the Four of Pentacles, where you have the opportunity to correct your heart chakra up here, you do look like you're trying to make yourself um, strong. What I do get with this Three of Pentacles in reverse is the fact that this collaboration or whatever the situation is that was going on with this partner, whether it was two people or three people or whatever the case may be, has, got you, has needed to happen, okay? It needed to happen, so the restoration for yourself is here. Don't be tempted to say, do, or anything, okay, that could potentially affect your um, your livelihood unless you've done work and you've been prepared to, to do the different things that you need to do. But the judgment card is telling you that good things are coming, okay? So this is kind of minor at this particular moment where this is more major. This is a little bit more minor at this point. Let's talk about this third eye chakra because you're seeing it. You have some awareness of something at some point. There it is. Okay, so the Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, you're 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 twisted up about this <laughs> this opportunity that's coming. So if I was an individual who was, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to change the energy to here. I believe this happened first, then I believe this happens next, and then I believe this happened third. So just as you're getting yourself back to good and you're starting to realize, yeah, I don't need to worry about what anybody else was doing. I got this. I'm taking care of myself. I'm loving on myself. I know that I used my good judgment. There's that opportunity to, again, receive those downloads and try to process them as fast and as quickly as you can. There's a potential that you won't sleep, but there's also a, a, a potential that um, you, you're still twisting a little bit enough to the point where you, you really do need to be able to articulate and speak out. This is throat chakra, even though it doesn't say throat chakra here as well. The temptation is going to be, okay, to really think about what's creating the stability or instability for you. And for me, I definitely know that it's a partnership here. Let me just double shit, double, yeah, double shit, double check. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely um, something that needed to fall to the side here. And that is why the tower showed up. So I think the tower showed up to prevent you from making a mistake and walking away from something until you were ready to actually do it. So your third eye chakra was looking at this ace of pentacles, this new um, prosperity opportunity here. And, um, yeah, you needed to get completely clear so that you weren't making that mistake. Yep. And there you go. You're releasing yourself from the devilish thoughts that you, um, had that self-imposed limitation about something. All you needed was a little bit of time to kind of get yourself together. So I'm going to go in now with, um, another angel card to see what the angels would like to say about this week's pull here for the 15th. And all of this energy is getting ready to happen before we hit the equinox on the 20th, which is that Saturday. So we've got the equinox, we've got Ostara, then we have the sun in Aries, which technically is really a great time for projects and also getting outside. And any challenge that you really do have is going to be made easy. Um, the other thing that's going to pop up that following um, Sunday is that we've got a couple of big things. Um, <clears throat> ah... Check it out. Expect some miracles. I love it. And then also, 
Mother, Father, God. So universe, Mother, Father, God, you know, however, whatever deity or, you know, whatever tribe that you want to call in for yourself. Really, this is the, a, a, it's a realignment of your masculine and your feminine within your, within your person, which kind of gets you back together, right? Miracles can only come through as long as you're open enough to receive them. So I'm going to, I'm going to harp on this judgment card one more time. Okay. So that's very clear to me that those are the things that are getting ready to happen. Like I said, some good shit's going to happen. So on the 21st, like I said, that Sunday, you're, there's going to be people, <clears throat> if it's not yourself, that are going to be very charming, a very charismatic. There's going to be a lot of focus on new business. Okay. The other thing whether you're coupled up or um, single is that there's going to be that natural time of the year where there's going to be a lot, like a lot of hot, sexy time, a lot of passion, if you will. It's just natural at this, at this time of the year. Okay. The final thing that happens on the 21st is that Mars in Gemini um, trines Saturn in Aquarius. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of increased productivity and a lot of reorganization that happens um, and a lot of strong focus. So you should be aware of that. Okay. Okay. So now we are into that Monday, um, which is going to be the 22nd that whole week. Um, and then what happens next on that Tuesday is the 23rd Mercury goes into Pisces. Okay. And it squares Mars that's already in Gemini. So what's going to happen is it could potentially create some controversy and some internal battles. So don't shortcut any project that you start to work on. If there was any other way that I was going to change this order, it would be putting the nine, um, towards the end there, because that's where sometimes those internal battles show up. However, it definitely shows up here with this two of swords energy called mental conflict. Okay. A hundred percent you and only you, no one's doing it to you, but yourself. Um, you just, you can't seem to like let something go, but it's going to happen. Look at this two aces sitting right next to each other. Triumphant success. You got the ace of swords and you have the ace of, <laughs> and you have the ace of wands and you have the four of wands sitting next to each other. Is there one more card? They said, yes. This is groovy. Who else did I tell this to? Somebody, um, some people don't know how to handle good success because they weren't prepared for like really good things to happen. Whoa. So they start to judge and it's definitely this card that wants to show up. That's harmony. That's the lover's energy right there. Y'all open your heart, open your heart. Am I meant to read these other two cards that dropped? They said, yes. Well, here's the end of the story, y'all. <laughs> you get the nine of pentacles, material harvest, and you get the two of pentacles, movement choices and decisions being made here. So <laughs> I'm going to try to make a little space space here. Um, it is, like I said, it's potential that this controversy that happens to show up around the 23rd, um, you're psychic enough to be able to know and can start to feel the energy of, of the things that are going on. But you're going to get met with some triumphant success here. Passion is going to be reunited. You've got a new passion project. You're going to be all about trying to do this new thing. Where you had the firm foundations um, with the Four of Pentacles here, the foundation and achievement with the Four of Rods that shows up is the stability that it is that you were looking for that you thought you were losing back here, okay? The next thing that you have, like I says, is a major arcana of the lovers. So decisions, good decisions, right decisions, sitting next to the movement choices and decisions, which leads you to the material harvest. Now, not only spiritually, but physically as well. Um, getting outside in these next couple of weeks for you, Scorpio, is going to be super important because you're going to be able to um, take advantage of the natural energies that are out there. <sighs> they were not joking when they said that this was going to be um, a very good and full read. So before I clarify with the keeper of the light. I just, <laughs> I need to sit here. Mental conflict. Okay. How do I explain this for people? Cause it's not a bad card per se. It just means that you have a twisting. You keep going back and forth. Like you're waffling on something. Okay. Two of rods can't make possibly a wrong decision. All roads lead to wherever it is that you want to go. Two of pentacles. You have to make a choice. you got to make sure that something is continuously balanced in your favor so that you can continue to make movements going forward. So that choice or that decision has to be made. 
So this conflict is really between your head and your heart is what's going on. I'm not going to tell somebody what to do because the other issue that pops up is you're going to get this beautiful issue with clarity within your head. <laughs> and then you're going to get this beautiful clarity for passion for doing something that's in your heart. <laughs> that's 100% sac sacral chakra energy that's right here. But I do feel that whatever it is that you're going to do, you're going to make a great decision because it's going to support your foundations and achievement, your four, your four pillars, your four walls. It can potentially mean that there's a business proposal coming up um, because it's sitting next to the lover's card. There's a potential that it, there could be some sort of a romantic um, situation that pops up for you. It also can mean that... Um, you know, you've gotten to the point where you've made a decision about someone that you have harmony with. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, but it does mean that there's finally going to be some harmony in this particular situation that was kind of crazy at the very beginning part of this reading to where we to where we get to now. So the only card technically that needs to be um, clarified is going to be this um, lover's card. So let's go ahead and get into it. Open your heart chakra, though. Be open to the harmony that's available to you. Um, and what I was saying before was that, yes, someone else doesn't, <clears throat> some people don't necessarily understand how to um, handle a lot of good things when they show up for them at once. It doesn't have to be you. Um, you're given enough insight and lay of the land here that you can really make choices and de decisions um, in, in a way that's going to be best for you. Um but regardless, you're assured of coming out smelling like, wow, wheel of fortune. Second chances being granted. Anything else? Oh, my God. Ooh, ah, almost dropped it. <laughs> two, of, two of wands. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you can't make a wrong choice when it comes to this harmony situation. You cannot make a wrong choice. And that is exactly what I was feeling before. You can't really go wrong. You just have to make a decision. So just make one. Okay. <clears throat> to, to, to right place, right time. <clears throat> Excuse me. One, one, 11, 11 energy. Um, a lot of duplicates. He wasn't joking when he said that there was going to be a lot of duplicates that showed up on the board today because they were going to be most meaningful for you, Scorpio. So it looks like, just like a couple of other signs, you had to go through a bunch of boo-boo in order to get to what it is that you need to have done. But miracles are coming for you. Now I'm going to pull a Keeper of, of the Light for this particular row and see which master would like to step forward and support you, Scorpio another resource another another person to step forward and support you well hey omg look at this we have the holy spirit <clears throat> expect miracles <laughs> remember that only love is real miracle miracles will occur naturally spirit absolutely has your back um, and the and the white eagle ancestor spirit steps forward that says um, connect to your lineage um, and it's potential that a family wound or a pattern can be healed now. So um, I, that is just that is just tremendous energy right there. Something beautiful. Some good shit's going down. <laughs> I'm so excited. If you couldn't tell. OK, so what do we got going on here? All right. So. That is a lot of energy, like I said, through the week of like the like Mercury going into Pisces on that 23rd. The following Saturday, because like literally everything's happening on the weekend here, um, to, on the 26th, this is the time, Lightworker or anyone else that's just beginning their journey, I would ask for this connection with the White Eagle, the Ancestor Spirit, calling your ancestors, your guides, your galactic team, um, whoever it is that you need to be able to call on, okay, your deities, your, your, your pantheon of people. The veil is going to be very, very thin on the 26th, okay? Venus is, in con is conjunct um, the sun in Aries. So personal affirmations, you should beef those bad boys up. You're going to receive extremely quick responses from the universe on this day. So keep everything hopeful. Keep everything hopeful as much as you can. Keep everything positive. 
then you have Passover on the 27th, and then you have the full moon on the 28th, which actually happens to be a Sunday, that Palm Sunday. So whatever last bits of negative thought process or nastiness that you have to get rid of, that is going to be the day to do it, okay? Now, that is a lot of cards. Let us see what the universe has for us on the very last week, the 29th, the 30th, the 31st, up into um, Easter Sunday, April 4th. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, I have one. Let me reshuffle these just to make sure. All right, here we go. Ba Boom. Wow, that's very cool. So we have the Virgo um, Major Arcana of the Hermit. Okay, G going within a little bit, recognizing that you're still going towards the light. Take a knee if you need to. Are you going to fall? Thank you. <laughs> okay. Six of Pentacles in the reverse position. Okay. That might be resisting a little bit of guidance that you're supposed to be taking. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You've had so much good stuff that happened up here. You're, you're a little overwhelmed with, with information, potentially. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you serious? Successful completion with the world. You finished the cycle. It's time to move forward. Okay, so here's where... Come out, please. The solar plexus pops back up. Is there another card? Yeah. <laughs> Goodness. I'm not really sure. No, it's upright, they said. Okay, it's four cups energy. Okay, okay, here. Um, actually, I'm getting more hair font energy out of this than I am with anything else. This is the common theme that has happened for the literally the majority of all signs this particular month. Okay. The Hermit is talking about going inside, continuing to see the light that you have, following the path, taking that break where you need to be able to have the break. Th that's the Hermit. The Hierophant is represented of uh, something that's official, okay, like higher education, downloads, spiritual upgrades, um, additional education for something that you need. Things of that nature, like constructs of work, those different types of things, official official things that have to happen. What I'm getting here with the six of pentacles that's in reverse is pretty much like I said, even though everything else looks like it's continuing to line up okay, with the six of pentacles being in reverse, there seems to be a little bit of waffling again or a lack of balance with something that you're that you're that you're bringing forth. We're literally going to end up clarifying all of this again. But the universe is here to say that you're at the end of the, you've completed something successfully. You're done. It's time to move past. And it's literally time to graduate. Um, now, we do have solar plexus energy that's here, which is indicating, especially with this, um, with this passion ignited here, like you, they did say all your shockers were going to show up here. Um, you have a lot of creative energy that's going on here. And I feel if I was going to change the order of anything, it would probably look something like this. Why would you possibly, after all of this goodness showed up for you, be in a position where you're challenging? And the only reason is, is because you're so amped up in your solar plexus, like you're ready to go. Like you are ready to start making moves. Like you are ready, you're so ready to start getting to <clears throat> this next thing and the path ahead that you, that you may not be taking heed and warnings from people. So here's what's coming up here. You've got discontent and boredom, which is the name of this particular card. It's the Four of Cups. This indicates that there's an offer here, that you, you, you're you like poo-pooing a little bit, 
Um, and I, I wouldn't do that. I think that there is an opportunity for you to, A, I mean, if you are completely bored with something that was going on with the previous work or, you know, you're at that point with this time of the year that you're graduating from something or you're completing a certificate program of something of that nature um, and, and you don't want to be where you're at and you thought that you, like, lost your opportunity, you, you didn't. There's an opportunity for you to continue to move forward. However, whenever the Four of Cups shows up, you really should be mindful of the offer that's coming in. You don't always have to accept it, but you should at least marinate on it and you should be thinking about what that could potentially do for you, okay? So we're going to go ahead and pull a couple of cards from the Oracle of the Radiant Sun before I go in and clarify this, okay? And there they are. <laughs> No jokes. Friendship. See, this. You. some of you guys literally need to go back and you need to take a look at this Libra card, uh, or Libra reading, because many of the themes are exactly the same and these two cards were the same two cards, okay? Um, but this is very heavy also. Um, well, this is Moon and Cancer energy, this friendship card. So it, there's potential that you have a friend that's really trying to help you get control over situations so that you don't go crazy. Um, and you're almost like not really paying attention to them potentially. <clears throat> so let's go in and find out what's going on with this wisdom. What do we got going on with this wisdom card? Six of cups in reverse. So you're trying to get past something from, you're trying to get past something old, somebody that was trying to come back in. You're trying to, um, you're trying to release that information. So that's not bad. Why is the universe here? <clears throat> oh my God. You got the sun. Holy shit. I'm sorry, but this is freaking badass. So this is going to be in line with cancer, I think. <laughs> um, you've successfully completed something to the effect that you're getting the sun on top of it. You are getting all the things. Vitality back, your self-expression back. There's a, there's a possibility that you could potentially be doing some traveling as well. Potentially. But it is, it is all of the things that you want. Fame, positivity. Um, it, it's just victory. It's victory for all the different things that you want. Now hit me up about this solar plexus, please. Got to be ready to be ready to be ready. Be ready to be ready to be ready. Solar plexus, thank you. Oh my. You guys are going to be so happy. This is the Ten of Cups. <laughs> So somebody literally is getting their groove back, okay? Literally. Um, that is fantastic. That is fantastic. So then why do we have this six in six of pentacles in reverse? A little bit out of balance, a little bit out of whack, I think, just because you've got so much beautiful energy that's going on, you kind of don't know what to do with it. Yeah. <clears throat> um your your energy is all over the place to be perfectly honest which is not a bad situation with all this beautiful things that happen so you're giving you're you're giving the heads up here you're getting a heads up you gotta you gotta you gotta gotta bring gotta bring it together <laughs> what else do we need to know about this this uh knight of wands just to be on the safe side here <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah this is the seven of cups um okay so the seven of cups in reverse here with this knight of wands It definitely has something to do with this offer that's on the table. It absolutely does. Because the Seven of Cups upright indicates that you have a lot of options that are coming to you. Some people could potentially be confused about it. Not everyone. Some people could because they're able to handle all the different things that are that are showing up. This is indicating that it has something to do with this choice, this, discon this discontent and boredom. What's going on with this Four of Cups, please? You're not trusting... You're not trusting um, an individual that has maybe another offer. I don't even, I'm, I'm not even getting a sense of what that could potentially be at this particular second. But somebody's trying to help you and you're not seeing it. Okay, here a font again. God bless America. I told you. This is, <clears throat> you got to go in. You got to go within. You got to see the wisdom of the particular situation that's in front of you. The Hierophant has something to do with an official situation. So the wisdom that's sitting here is someone is trying to talk to you. There's a potential that maybe, okay, here's the scenario that they're showing me right now. The scenario that they're showing me right now is you got into it with your coworkers. You had a beef, whatever was going on. You said some things, you did some things to kind of get it off your chest. It still had you twisted for a little bit of time. 
you're trying to move forward and you are moving forward past it. You did it justifiably for what it is that you needed to be able to do, which is going to carry you very, very far. Okay. This also could mean, and I, I got to go back underneath a couple of the cards here. So just bear with me. This option that's showing up here. <laughs> We're going to go back to this row. Yeah, we're going to go back to this row here. Now I'm, okay, so this offer that you're getting here, and, and like I said, the scenario that I'm getting is somebody from your past has got some detail, potentially, which is going to have an influence on what it is that they're trying to provide you with guidance on, in a sense. Almost like you've got someone that wants to help you with investment in, in a sense or an old boss or an old individual, an old somebody that is like you're rejecting someone coming back from the past. OK, which potentially could still that's what's causing this conflict within this particular week. Again, these are not in any order for the for the days of the week. So but the energies are strong enough to know that you've got a passion project and then you, you've got a passion project here. Right. Passion is reignited. And then you've got some clarity about some things. So where you're being asked to realize the harmony in the particular situation, especially when it comes to a choice, because you've got a second chance here with this Wheel of Fortune. Somebody is presenting themselves here in your energy that it wants to give you a piece of advice, and for some reason you're just, you're like resistant to it. So the universe is really just saying, take a knee, go within, this is definitely something official, um, it's something that's going to benefit you, just think twice before you say no, just just think twice before you say no. That's really, I, I, the, what else can you really say? But you've got, <laughs> you've got the Wheel of Fortune, you've got the Universe, you've got the Sun, you've got the Ten of Cups that are sitting here. Something is meant for you and you had to go through this dramatic situation up and through here in order to clear yourself, in order to receive this bounty. That is, that's just basically what it boils down to. So final card, guys, we're going to go into this final card. This is the Sacred Geometry deck. Oh, I caught him. I caught him with my kneecaps. Here we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, this Ten of Cups goes here on the solar plexus. There we go. So we want to have um, one card here for our Scorpio to kind of round out this really awesome reading. Okay. This is really, really awesome. I'm so happy to see this. All right, one card, please. <laughs> oh, you got two. Oh, wow. Okay, some of you really got to go back and you got to take a look at this. Was it Libra? Was it Libra or Virgo? At, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. There, There's a lot of similarity in energies for the past couple of readings that I did. The first one was Vitality, okay, which is energizing your entire being, Um Card 47 reduces down to a master number 11. So you are absolutely being guided, okay? And then the other card that comes up is the master number 7. And 7 are all, those are good things, right? So it's a rebirth, it's transformation, it's reweaving, it's reactivating. It is, um, this is the symbol of Archangel Metatron, just so that you have an opportunity to understand what that is. I've said before that I actually take this image in written, in, written in, um, in, in different forms, and I actually do crystal grids with it to help, especially if I'm feeling a little bit catawampus, um, to just receive that clarity. So you, you should take a still of this. You can meditate with this uh, on your phone. Just have it open maybe with an image while you have music running in the background or just meditate with it um, as best that you can. I am telling you guys, you, by the end of, I, I can't even wait to find out what happens for you in April. I really can't. I am, I can't even wait, but I'm not going to try to pull energies for it right now. Um, I would probably blow my own noodle with all this good, with all this good information that's here. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just summarize really, really quickly um, because we have like 500 cards on the table. <laughs> They weren't lying. Some good shit was going to happen. The only thing they're saying is don't block your blessings. Don't let your issues fuck up this good opportunity that's coming, guys. Okay? Seriously. Um, use your power of manifestation to grab what it is that you want. Call it in. Okay? Call it in. What is it that you want? You have a strong bond with Mother Nature. 
Maybe that's going to be meaningful for someone that's trying to transition into doing more light work. But you definitely have to clear yourself of all energies that don't belong to you, okay? Ask the angels to help clear you with anything that you've absorbed. You definitely have some stuff that needs to happen within your sacral chakra because a lot of people actually hold negativity in their guts, in their, in their creativity center, your sex center. Um, it stifles your creativity, right? So keep away from people or situations that are um, creating that drama for you. Utilize your feminine divine, um, regardless of whether you're male or female, use that aspect of your feminine divine to express yourself. And you are very, very um, intuitive. You already know this. Loving compassion on yourself or for the situation for anybody that's involved in what's going down here. Mother, Father, God indicates, like I said, well, yeah, it can be Mother, Father, God, um, the feminine and the masculine part of what we're, who you are within this universe. Holy Spirit is here telling you to expect miracles. You're being asked to call in your ancestors and guides to support you. Very many of you actually have your guides around you that are helping you to receive this, these informational pieces. You're being told by the angels to expect miracles here. Um, you know, the only other guidance from the universe has to do with the fact that you definitely have a friend um, that is trying to help you. You need to foster friendship where you can. Control is controlling yourself more so than controlling a, a particular situation. Um, and, you know, this whole ostentation piece that, that pops up with it, uh, be grounded as much as you possibly can because you guys are going to have a really kick-ass month. And then by the end of this month, beginning into April, you're going to be completely restored. Vitality, head um, head, heart, spirit, mind, body, spirit. Okay. And then, like I said, this rebirth, you're getting ready to really turn the corner because you are at the point where the universe has said that you have successfully completed something that you needed to do. And you've got the sun card at the end of the day showing up here. It's all the different things that you want to have happened with the 10 of cups. I mean, seriously, and the wheel of fortune. <sighs> all right, Scorpio, that is enough. <laughs> Um, I am really honored to have been able to deliver this information to you. This is so fun for me to be able to help people um, understand the roadmap that's in front of them. You obviously have free will and you can do anything that you want to be able to do, but you're set up in a really good position if you can um, have some self-control. And love on yourself really is, is, is really what it boils down to. Um, so I won't see you again until probably the second week of April. So... In the meantime, if you enjoyed this reading just as, as much as I enjoyed giving it to you, then, you know, hey, give it a thumbs up, <clears throat> give it a like, make some comments. I am really involved with trying to understand where people at. If you're not comfortable doing the comments within the YouTube page, then my um, email information is in the description box. I have a lot of people that do that, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for all of the new viewers that are um, accepting of this type of information and the way that I deliver it, even though it's weird sometimes. Um I am taking bookings for the remainder of month of March and April. So if you're guided to want to take some personal one-on-one -on -one time with me, then again, the description information is in the box. If you didn't particularly resonate with this portion, that's fine. Maybe the messaging wasn't specifically for you. Don't know where you're at within your sun, your moon, and your personal natal chart. But share this content. Maybe it's going to be meaningful for someone else that needs to hear it. Otherwise, I encourage you to take a look at all of your signs, sun, moon, and rising to get the full picture. And with that, Scorpio... That is it for now, and I will see you in uh, the first couple of weeks of April. Bye for now.